film room here hosted by Lawrence Owen. And today we are going to go over something incredibly impressive. Something that a lot of a lot of people in the NFL just take for granted. And that's run blocking. That's right. Run blocking on the perimeter. On the perimeter. Right? I mean, when you think about run blocking, it's all about, you know, your offensive line, your tight ends. But what about the wide receivers? How important is run blocking by wide receivers in the NFL, today's NFL? Well, let's go to the film room and check it out. There isn't a whole lot of wide receivers that do it really well. And there's a lot of wide receivers that just don't want to get their hands dirty. Let's actually see what kind of situations that we can find in this year's wide receiving core when it comes to run blocking, shall we? When we talk about run blocking in the NFL, generally it's about the offensive line. It's about those five guys in the trenches. We don't even talk about tight ends near as much as we used to because they've changed in today's game. You got your Darren Wallers, your Zach Ertz, your Travis Kelseys, who are basically really big wide receivers. They don't block nearly like they used to in the NFL. I mean, there's a few out there. For instance, let's take Jack Doyle here, who can catch the football out of the backfield, but when it comes to run blocking, bam. He knows how to seal an edge. He knows how to make that edge seal, right? Well, what about guys like Mo Alley Cox? You know, another run blocking tight end that can catch the football out of the backfield. Watch number 51 again, Mo Alley Cox. Heck, Jack Doyle brings his guy all the way to the end, sealing the edge for the outside. But here, what about wide receivers? Huh? What about wide receivers? I mean, wide receivers don't like to block. There's a few out there that will. But if what you end up generally having is something more like this, where your wide receiver out on the edge is going to just want to run a go route. Right? That way it, it kind of pulls the corner back away. That way he's not in on the tackle. Watch Jack Doyle here. Watch it. Sit down, my guy. Boom. Tight ends are important in the run game. Wide receivers just want to uh, sprint and hopefully get their guy way out there so that they're ineffective. But what if this play was meant for Jonathan Taylor to go this way? It just does not look like that's a good situation to try to sprint and let the cornerback run past you, which is why you need wide receivers who are not just able but willing to block in the run game. Now, why are the Indianapolis Colts so good at running the football? Because every player on the team blocks, whether it's pass blocking, run blocking, does not matter. Here, you got a wildcat. You got... Phillip Rivers all the way out here at wide receiver. So you know the corner is not like, okay, I, I have to stay here because you never know that if he takes off, he's going to throw that little. So he takes this corner completely out of this play. It's a wildcat option. You're going to have Jack Doyle uh, cut block on the outside. You got, he's got the option of letting uh, Jonathan Taylor take the sweep across here. But in doing so, these wide receivers are absolutely going to have to block out these corners, right? And then in order to stop these guys right here, Hines has the option to run right up the gut, which will hold these guys long enough for Taylor to get that edge. But this whole play is predicated on wide receivers winning their blocks against the corners and safeties. Let's watch. Watch First, let's watch Zach Pascal. He gets out here on the edge, hammers, going nowhere. Now, let's watch Michael Pittman against the safety. Sit down. Yeah. That's what happens. And then watch Jack Doyle on the cutback block. Watch the, but, yeah, that right there is how you stop. That's how you block. And because Naheem Hines is keeping the running, uh, he's in that wildcat, that freezes these two guys and allows Taylor to get around the edge. 
but it was all predicated on these two wide receivers getting their blocks and holding them against the defensive backs. And because they were not only able but willing to do so, and do so in a way <laughs> that is just, yeah, nasty, Jonathan Taylor is able to walk in untouched. No one even come close to him, really. He could have went all the way to the outside and no one would have been within five yards. Let's take a look at other teams with other wide receivers that allow their running game to flourish because they're willing in this day and age of the passing game to go down and do the dirty work and run block in the run game. You're still here? Awesome! Thanks for watching this stream. Please, if you have a moment of your time, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so you're notified next time I go live. And if you got a few extra seconds, hit that description down there below the video and check out all the places that you can follow me, whether it be Sportscaster here on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and there's a couple places where you can help donate to my channel. That way I can continue to bring all this content to you. Thank you for your support. Now, let's get back to the video. The Browns have a really, really good run game. One of the best in the NFL right now between Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb running the football. But one of the big things that helps a lot is Jarvis Landry. I mean, Jarvis Landry is such an aggressive run blocker. You think of him as being this great wide receiver, but he aggressively attacks, and he doesn't give up until that whistle is blown, no matter what. Let's watch this play. The play doesn't even go anywhere near them, but watch what he does to this cornerback on this play. It's just nasty. He runs out here. He's locking him up. He's going to watch him. He's coming out, and then as soon as he comes in, it's just locked up. It's a lockup, and look, this play's over. Here they come into the screen, still fighting until the whistle's blown. Why is that? Because Jarvis Landry attacks run blocking just as aggressively as he does wide receivers. I mean, as he does going out there and catching a football. That is aggressive run blocking, and that's why the Cleveland Browns run the ball so well. Why do the Rams have such a great running game? And they predicated a lot. If you'll notice, if they're not running it up the gut and they run it out to the outside edge, they're going to run right towards Robert Woods. Robert Woods is not just a great receiver. This man knows how to seal an edge in order to keep a running back free from being hit. Watch this play as he just is all over the New England cornerback. This is a good run, Cam Akers, right through here. And Robert Wood sets himself, positions, and keeps him completely out of the play for a month. If it wasn't for Robert Woods willing to step in the way and seal that corner off so that Wood, so that Akers can run right past him, this is a tackle around the line of scrimmage. But Robert Woods is so good at positioning himself and keeping the corner away from from the ball carrier. This is beautiful technique. And, and just fights with him until Akers is already blown way past him. Way past him. Robert Woods is a top-notch run-blocking wide receiver in the NFL. And definitely needs the credit that he deserves in this aspect. Because he allows, because he can run block and is willing and able to do so. That means it helps the play action pass because this is play action. In a situation like this, he could have then took off. Had it not been a run, he could have took off here. <laughs> and it would have been a pass completion to him because he'd have been open due to the play action because Robert Woods run blocks and is willing and does it very, very well. As we move on to another good running team, here is the Ravens just this past week's game. And yeah, that's Trace McSorley at quarterback. So you know uh, Jackson's not running this football. They're, if they're going to run it, they're going to run it with a running back, most likely. Miles Boykin. 
that's right. You don't hear this name very often, but the kid can actually block quite well. On this play that we watch, you got Miles Boykin on the outside. This is a run up the gut. How does the outside receiver affect this? By watch what he does. Watch, watch how he plays this. This is beautiful. He actually gets into the thick of things, gets face-to-face -face with a linebacker. A linebacker. Number 93 here for the Browns. Giving up size big time. He not only holds his own, but he actually pushes him out of the play until, obviously, uh, Boykin is hit in the back. He's got to get out of there because his legs are in trouble. But, I mean, look how he just pushes him completely out of the play. He gets knocked out by, what was that, number 98? Yeah, what was that Sheldon Richardson probably? But my goodness, that is unbelievable right there. And because he did that, that's one less player in the thick of things and allows the run to pick up more yardage. That is beautiful. I mean, he actually, the runner ran behind him. So he was legitimately, look at that. The runner cuts behind Boykin. That was a beautiful run block. And this is one of the, another one of the reasons why the Ravens have a great run game because they have receivers who are not afraid to get in there, even against guys bigger than them, and mix it up. Beautiful play by Boykin. Now, no wide receiver run blocking film room breakdown is complete without Larry Fitzgerald. He's been doing it for years. Him and Hines, but granted, Hines for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Hines Ward, he's, he's not around anymore. But Fitzgerald still is, and he's still doing it. He is still doing it. Right here you got him. Watch, watch this play, what he does. This is beautiful. Kyler Murray is going to roll out here, and Larry Fitzgerald's just going to make sure he's not, yeah, look at, bam, bam, uh-uh, nope, you can't get in there, nope. Beautifully done. Be let's watch. Let's watch the play completely around. This is this is gorgeous. See how he steps back and gets into the way. He's like, nope. I know. I know where my guy's going. Because he's able to do that, Murray's able to get plenty of yardage. Plenty of yardage. Right here we go. Right here on the edge. Just keep an eye on him. Number forty nine, wanting to come in here, and it ain't gonna happen. He just stays in the way, pushes. It's all that matters. He doesn't have to be overly aggressive, get a pancake. Not against a guy that's, that's you know, almost twice his size. All he's got to do is just stay in the way and not fall down. And he does a great job doing that. And not a holding right there. He made sure his hand stayed where it needed to be and did his best to keep his body between him and the ball carrier, which was his quarterback. But... This was great. I mean, fantastic block by Larry Fitzgerald. And there's a good possibility. There's a good possibility that run blocking is going to be right on the description of Larry Fitzgerald's bust in Canton, Ohio. Like I said, a lot of times it's just about the willingness to get in there and do it. Right, a lot of times. Now, Corey Davis is a guy who just does not get credit for being a run blocker. The guy on AJ Brown, they give him all the credit in the world for being a big physical wide receiver. But watch Corey Davis here, what he does on this play. It legitimately springs Derrick Henry for an extra five yards because of what he does here to the safety. I mean, it's it's a beautiful play. He comes in. Right here on the outside of Michael Pruitt. And watch, watch how he does the timing that he comes in. is gorgeous. Bam. All right. That's an extra five yards because Davis not only got in there, but let's watch this slowly. Not only got in there, but timed it beautifully. The where the safety did not realize he was even getting hit at the time. And getting sealed off to give Henry the chance to, to break out and get an extra five yards. That's Joseph, my guys. Let's watch this play. This is beautiful. Pruitt gets the edge here. You don't see him. And look, 
at this point, it's like, oh, this is this is dead on. He ain't getting more than four or five yards off this play. But look at Corey Davis just shooting in off to the side. And this is a beautiful. He lowers his shoulder. Bam. Great, great block, which allows Henry to get an extra five, six yards out of this play. All because Corey Davis not only was willing to get in there, but got in there at the perfect time. You know, just a surprise block out of nowhere. And he was physical. I mean, Joseph is known as a really hard-nosed, hard-hitting physical safety. And you don't think about that with Corey Davis, but uh, yeah, bam. Now, you're going to say, well, he lowered his helmet, but he didn't make contact, and he, he led with his shoulder. His helmet didn't actually, wasn't the first to make the contact. His shoulder made contact first, so that's not a penalty at all. But this is just beautifully done. Beautifully done. My goodness. Great block by Corey Davis. I mean, you just don't think of that. But if you just go back and look at the film, you see Corey Davis is more than willing to go in there and do the job that tight ends will do. And that's why Derrick Henry has such great... Look at everybody. Watch everybody on this play. Everybody is blocking, right? And they're blocking well. And that's why he gets 10, 11 yards on this play. Everybody's blocking well. Beautifully done. And that's why Derrick Henry gets so much yardage. Because the entire team wants to block for this guy. Knowing if you block enough for him, he's going to break out some big yardage. Now this is a prime example of when wide receivers would rather just try to run a cornerback out of a play than get in the mix of things. And had they got in the mix of things on this, there's a good chance that this play could have been uh, uh, successful. Now, as you can see, you got your wide receivers out here on the outside, and the corners are legitimately playing quite a bit off, right? I mean, you got quite a bit of space here. Now, in this situation, this is a run right up th this way. Now, what if he would have came in and him would have came in because that would have helped against the linebackers. But, of course, wide receivers don't want to mix it up with a linebacker. Let's watch the play. But had this happened, there's a chance that play could have been stopped. Because this cornerback and this cornerback is complete. Well, this is a safety. No, I'm sorry. That's Rhodes. But you got these two corners here. They're well off. If the wide receivers would have cut in, if he'd have just ran inside, they would have had time to at least get in the way of the run. Now, you would have forced a cornerback on your running back. And I'll tell you what, running backs would much rather have to run over or avoid a, a cornerback than a linebacker any day of the week, just like a wide receiver would not want. side and hit the guys that are closest that are unblocked and they don't do that they don't they, they would rather run their corners their coverage guys out of the play now had he came in here and hit him and he came in here and hit Darius Leonard there is a chance this play could have broke free but We'll never know because they would rather run their receivers out of the play than actually get in and mingle with linebackers. And that's just not a good situation at all. That's not a good situation. Because you'd have had extra blockers. Now the corners, the corner, no, okay, that was Rocky Sin, not Xavier Rhodes. But either way, I mean, why? Why wouldn't you take the closer guy rather than the guy who's already playing deep? Now, you could take off, and as soon as they're stepping in, cut inside. Cut inside. Try to help block some of these guys out. 
I mean, my goodness, this is a one-yard gain because the wide receivers didn't want to mingle it with the with the linebackers when their coverage guy was way, way off of them. You got to be able to help your running backs out. Now, I get that this is a design play, but it's designed like this because of how the wide receivers are willing to block in the run game. Now, if the wide receivers were more willing to block in the run game, they would have probably been designed, the play would have been designed for them to cut inside to help with the block, especially on, especially this guy. He probably would have been cut inside hard for the cutback because that's what you want. And this is a play where it, he could go out this way or cut back up the middle. And the wide receiver could have had a shot at Darius Leonard, Anthony Walker, somebody. But because he's not willing to make those hardcore blocks, he'd rather just run the corners out of the play. Even when they're already basically out of the play anyhow because they're so deep. See, look, he even stops up close. I mean, look, both these guys, they don't run into. Look, he's slowing down. He's slowing down. He, he's just waiting. This, this is not good. That was completely lackadaisical. He don't know that his guy has stopped in the background. He has no idea. He's still, he's watching Rock. But he's just lackadaisically coming up. He's running at, he's just lackadaisically letting him go. That tells you right there. He does not want to get into the run blocking. Had he been a run blocking wide receiver, he would have came in earlier, like I said, and mixed it up with the linebackers because of how deep Rock was already playing against him. So, you can tell just by the play call and how it's designed on whether or not a coach knows what kind of wide receiver he has, whether he has someone that is more than willing to mix it up, get inside there and, and lay blocks, even on guys bigger than them to help with the run game, or guys who just, you know, really don't want to do that, but they're quick so they can run out and try to, you know, uh, make the cornerback follow them, which in essence really kind of helps put them outside of the early run box. So, personally, when you got guys like Michael Pittman Jr. or Miles Boykin who can do both, or Larry Fitzgerald, or, you know, the other guys that I had this play in these clips, absolutely, you want these kind of guys. Guys, Mike Evans even, who are not afraid to go in there and block somebody who, you know, not just on the outside the corners, but not afraid to get in there against linebackers and, and heavy safeties and, and even defensive linemen at times, you know. They don't care as long as they are in on the play and help make a play big. Because as if the team wins, they win. And I'm telling you that this kind of stuff shows up on film for when they become free agents on when they, they actually get contract extensions and stuff. Do you think that Zachary Paschal for the Indianapolis Colts is going to get a contract extension just because of what he does as a wide receiver? No, this man knows how to block. He's going to get a little extra money because of the effort that he puts in and how well he does it. So I want to thank all of you for watching this film room breakdown of wide receivers blocking on the perimeter or, you know, wide receivers just getting in, on, in inside the box and, and mixing it up there. This was a great film room that I absolutely enjoyed breaking down because when you see the smaller guys out there pushing other guys around, helping in the run game, it just makes you feel like, Ur, this is football season, right? You know this is December, January type football when the run game is at its best and the playoffs kick in and the cold weather, you're going to want these guys out there blocking for your running backs. I'm Lawrence Owen for Colts Law Film Room Breakdown here on Sportscaster. And as usual, I want you to have a good one.
just because a guy's a player's not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.